Hello and welcome back to Let's Code Physics. Um, today I want to do a couple things. We're going to uh, show you some updates to our um, Druda circuit model. I've made some improvements to how the electrons are generated. Um, and then we will get to the main part of the show, the title of the episode, Resistors in Series. So I'm teasing you with the diagram here that we'll be talking about resistors hooked up in series. Um, just to show you some of the things that I've changed uh, just off camera to, to avoid boring you with all the technical Python details. Um, uh, first thing I've done is I've moved the uh, creation of the electrons, the instantiation of that object, into the wire class. So our wire class is getting bigger. It all starts up here. Um, I've made a few extra arguments to this thing. So now it, it takes the electron density as an argument, takes the voltage instead of the electric field as, as an argument, and it now offers a color argument so that your uh, resist, or excuse me, yeah, your wires, your resistors can have different color coding. Um, it's, it's not the same color coding as resistor color coding if you're an electrical engineer. Um, that was the day my mind broke in circuits class was when we had to try to learn the resistor color coding. Um, so what we've got here inside the wire creation, whenever you create the wire, it's going to create the electrons inside the wire. So it's taking that electron density and it's taking the wire volume. And so that is going to be the total number of electrons in this wire. Um, I don't rem remember if we had this last time, but now we're uniformly distributing um, across all positions in the wire. So the X component, the Y component, and the Z component. Uh, previously, I had them all starting in the middle, and that's rather artificial, and that makes the code take longer to reach an equilibrium. So I'm uniformly distributing them across the wire now. Um, and then when we go to create the electrons, we're also giving them a randomized velocity so that they're not starting out stationary. They do start out with a randomized velocity, just using the standard spherical coordinates, um, theta and phi here, or phi and theta. So this is spherical coord phi, and this one is spherical coordinate theta. I think the math textbooks reverse that from how we have and in the physics text, this is the coordinate within, or excuse me, this is the angle within the xy plane, and this is the angle from the z axis. And as always, one of them runs from 0 to 2 pi, and one of them runs from 0 to pi, so that you only have one sphere, so that you're not double counting the entire sphere of existence. Um, let's see, what else have we done? Um, I removed the, uh, the wire wrap around, um, so now when the uh, electron reaches an, an edge of the wire, it just bounces, right? So we want to be able to connect wires now. So I've removed that, um, just like we had in the previous video about um, electrons going around in a loop. Um, <clears throat> so I've sort of combined my code from last time with the code from the electrons going around in a loop. Um, and so I can no longer calculate the current as when the electron passes from one side of the wire to the other. Um, I thought it would be easier to calculate the current based on when the electron passes through the center of its wire. So I've got this rather long um, setup here. I have broken it up into several different lines to make it a little bit easier to read, but um, for a single cluster like this one, uh, it's kind of hard to, I, I didn't want to confuse myself by breaking that up into different lines. Um, so basically this is checking for when the electron passes through the center of its wire, and that could be going in the direction of the wire or opposite the direction of the wire. And so to count the current, what we're doing is rather than going through all the possibilities of an upward wire and a downward electron or a downward wire and a downward electron and all those combinations, the way we're calculating it here is we're taking the dot product between the electron's velocity and the wire's axis. So if the electron is traveling in the direction of the wire's axis, you get a positive number. If the electron is traveling opposite the direction of the wire's axis, you get a negative number. And we're just turning those into plus ones and minus ones using the sign argument. So the sign turns positive numbers into plus one, it turns negative numbers into negative one, and it turns zero into zero. So it's 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 uh, it's a little bit fancier version of the Heaviside step function. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so that's helpful there. And again, it's only triggering this calculation whenever the um, electrons pass through the center of the wire. So if you want to envision an ammeter like we did last time, um, this is now we're putting the ammeter in the center of the wire. 
And so the only thing I have to do now to create my circuit, notice that I'm getting more and more in the classes and in the subroutines and less and less in the things that, that you, the user, actually have to declare. So this is where you, the user, would declare the, uh, the, the information that you want. Um, I've also set up, uh, I don't think, yeah, I think we had voltage last time, but what I've got this time is I've got the battery voltage. And now we're defining our, um, our our resistor voltages in terms of the battery voltage. So now let's go back to our diagram. Now let's talk about resistors in series. So when resistors are placed in series, so this is the this is the circuit that we're uh, that we're modeling. We've got the voltage here. So this is voltage of the battery. So if you if you don't mind, we'll just abbreviate that V for right now. And then we've got four resistors going around the circuit. And just for simplicity, for this first one, we've got um, we've got four identical resistors, so they've all got the same resistance. What you do is you reduce that circuit down to a circuit that has one battery and one resistor. So you've got the same voltage here, and then what you do when the resistors are in series, you simply add them. They add in the usual uh, item one plus item two plus item three way. So this would have a total uh, resistance of 4R. So if you apply Ohm's law there, you should get a current of I equals uh, V divided by 4R, right? Because V equals current times resistance. So you divide both sides by the resistance. In this case, you're dividing by the total resistance, 4R. Um, <clears throat> and so you've got uh, the current given by this. That value is not terribly interesting to us right now. I mean, we can, we can certainly confirm that. Um, but what I'm more interested in is how the voltage divides across these resistors. So if I now think about an individual resistor, right? So this individual resistor, take for example this, uh, actually let's take the top one here because I want to make some changes to the bottom one later. Um, let's take the, the top one. It's going to have a current of V divided by 4R. And so what that means is that this guy's voltage, the voltage the voltage drop that he gets, or as I like to think, the amount of voltage that this resistor gets to eat, is going to equal I times his R. And so that's going to be V over 4R. This is taking up more space than I originally thought, times R. So he's going to get voltage divided by 4. He's going to get one quarter of the voltage of the battery, just like the others. Which makes sense. This battery has a total amount of voltage V to give. It's got equal resistors. So by symmetry, they all have to get the same amount. So they're all getting one quarter of the voltage because by the time you come around the loop here, you have to have used up all of the uh, voltage in the battery. Otherwise, voltage builds up and the circuit explodes. Um, so what we'll, what we'll do there is for the voltage for each of these, we're making the individual wire voltage, the individual resistor voltage, one quarter of the battery voltage. So here I'm, I'm treating my wires and my resistors I, as, as the same thing, because um, wires do have a resistance that hopefully they have very low resistance, but we're basically treating them like one combined object. So we've got this uh, voltage being divided across each of these. We've got a quarter going to each of them. They're all identical. They've got the same, uh, let's see, they've got the same resistivity. They've got the same electron density. Uh, they've got the same length and width. They're just pointing in different directions and they're just given different locations. Um, so what we'll do here is we'll run this. Um, again, we're graphing. Now, the reason I color coded this is so that we could tell the difference between each of the wires. So let's take a look at our printout here to check that everything's working out fine. So our resistors all have the same voltage. They've all got the same number of electrons. Yes, I mismatched the numbers because I still believe in counting from one. Um, <clears throat> and so the reason we have this color coded is so that we can look at the currents that are going to be graphed because we're going to have one current graph for each uh, wire. And uh, the graphs are going to be color coded based on the color of the resistor. So I also moved, I forgot to mention this. Uh, we'll, we'll go over this while the graph is waiting to display. Um, Within the wire uh, class, uh, that is where it creates the current versus time graph. So it's appending a G curve with the color given by the same color as the wire. So what that means is on this chart, on this graph here, we're going to get a trace with a red for the red wire, a trace in yellow for the yellow wire, 
a trace in blue for the blue wire and a trace in cyan for the not quite blue wire. Um, so I think I'll do what I did last time and go into fast motion here just so we can uh, see this thing unfold in a reasonable amount of time. We're back. Uh, sorry for the wild calculator appearing in the window there. Realized I wanted, I did actually want to do the current calculation. Um, so what we see is we get about the same current in each of the wires, right? That's what we expect because you can't have more electrons passing through one than you have through the other unless the electrons build up somewhere. Um, so this is about the same, right? We've, we've learned to expect a little bit of variation in this. I pulled out the calculator because I think I would like to um, run the numbers for the current. So we figured out that the that the current should be I divided by four times the total resist or times the resistance of a given wire. So let's calculate the resistance of one of these things. Um, so let's see. So we have a length here and a width here. So the way I can calculate the resistance is by oh, excuse me. I got the length and the width. Excuse me. Um, so the way I can calculate the resistance <clears throat> is by taking the resistivity. That's one times the length, that's 11, divided by the area, so that's going to be the width squared, so that's going to be divided by 1, divided by 1, right, so that'll be divided by 1 squared. So I've got a resistance of 11. Um, now there is a little bit of overlap to these things, so, um, you know, if you think about the center to center part, that might be more like 10, so we might be off by about 10% here, but if I take my total voltage, so let's see, if I take my total voltage, my battery voltage is 100, and I'm dividing that by, um, let's see, each resistor has a resistance of 11, so four times that is gonna be 44, so we're dividing by 44. I get a current of a, around two and a quarter. Um, that is, lo and behold, not what I, oh, right, right, this is not, this is not the current proper, this is the number of electrons. Um, so that calculation was not, uh, oh gosh, how do you turn that into current? You need to turn that into, oh gosh, I guess I actually need to work on the charge of these things. Okay, never mind. Scrub that. Oh, and I can't cut that, can I? Because I came back from fast motion. Okay, well, either way, um, let, let's test it this way then. Uh, if I double the voltage, I should get double the current. Um, so let's see, so this is going to be, uh, let's see, this is about 13, so if I double the voltage, so this is going to double the voltage for the whole circuit, so I should get about 26 on the current for this, so let's... We had 13 last time, it looks like we're not quite going to get up to 26, it increases, but not by that much. So I'm wondering if I, hmm, let's see, I've done the voltage division correctly. Oh well, that'll be something I'll check out off camera. I mean, it has increased. Um, it's it's not increased by the amount I expected it to. Um, so okay, so I, you're probably thinking at this point uh, that this is not all that different from the loop we had just a, a, a few episodes ago, which was now um, about a month motion series in between uh, the two halves of the Druda series. But the real advantage is that now I can start changing the resistances of the different wires. Last time I had to keep them all uniform, but this time I can change the resistance of each of them. Let me show you what I mean by that. Let's suppose <clears throat> uh, we wanted to redo all this, well, well we'll need to redo all this math. Let's suppose we took out the bottom resistor and we replaced it with a resistor that was twice as strong as the other one, um, as, as, as the other. So you've got resistance, 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 and then two times the resistance. A um, couple things are going to change there. First of all, the resistivity of this wire is going to change because I'd like to keep it the same shape. Although I suppose I could uh, decrease its width, um, but I think what I'll do for now is just is just double its resistivity. Um, <clears throat> what that's going to do is that's going to change this total resistance calculation because that's going to change this 4 into a 5. So everywhere I have a 4, I've got to replace that now with a 5. So the current is going to decrease by a bit. It's going to decrease by uh, going from 1 fourth to 1 fifth. not going to embarrass myself trying to calculate that percent, percent change. 
Um, but what that means is that the current going through each one is going to reduce by a factor of five. So for example, for this resistor, it's going to get V divided by five R current. So you, again, you go through and you replace all the fours with fives it's gonna get one fifth the battery voltage. So this one will get a fifth of the battery voltage, this one will get a fifth of the battery voltage, this one will get a fifth of the battery voltage. But this one has double the resistance. So what that means when I go to calculate its voltage is I need to take the current going through it times this thing's resistance, but this thing's resistance is two times R. So I repeat the same calculation that I have here and what that means is I'm going to get two voltage of the battery divided by five. So if you think of V over five as, as sort of one unit of, res, of voltage, these are each going to get one unit or one share. This guy's going to get two shares because he's got twice the resistance. He's going to eat up twice the amount of voltage. So what I have to do to change this is, uh, let's again, let's do the, the bottom resistor. So we're going to increase his resistivity by a factor of two. Uh, it does go direction resistivity, right? Uh, direction resistivity, yes, okay, good. <clears throat> um, and what I also have to do is I have to increase his uh, his uh, voltage amount. So, uh, oh, I've also got to change all these voltages because now it's going to be um, one-fifth of the voltage. This one's going to be one-fifth of the voltage. This one's going to be one-fifth of the battery voltage. This one's going to be two-fifths, otherwise known as 0.4. So if I add these up, I should get one point seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. And so now what we should see is we should still see the same current in all of them, even though this guy has twice the resistance of the others. Um, I suppose I need to come up with some mechanism. Well, I would say I need some mechanism of measuring the voltage across each one of these, but that's kind of artificial because I'm setting the voltage across each one. Um, so again, we'll switch over to fast motion to um, uh, just to uh, uh, keep the video reasonable. Okay. So again, we get uh, the same current in each resistor. Uh, even though we've changed the uh, the resistance of the bottom wire, we get the same current. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, I am curious to make sure that this will work if I change the resistance by changing the width of this thing. So um, we're going to keep the voltages the same because I want to keep this one's resistance doubled. So that means its voltage needs to be doubled. But I'm going to give it the same resistivity. So now you imagine that we have the same material still. Um, but what we're going to change is the width. Now, if I want to double the resist the resistance, right? Let's let's do a little bit of math here. If I want, if I've got row equal r equals row l over a. A is the width squared, right? So if I want to double the resistance, then I need to have a one half in the denominator here, because dividing by half is the same thing as multiplying by two. What that means is I need to have uh, the width go to the width divided by square root of two because the width is getting squared. Okay, so I need to have width divided by square root of two. I think this, yeah, this knows what square root is. Um, cool, so what? now I may need to do some, uh, some physical adjustments here. Yeah, because that is not, is that reaching it? Hang on one second. Let's let's take a look here just to make sure that this is okay. Yeah, it is intersecting appropriately. Um, I've decreased the width by a factor of square root of two. Um, so square root, of, or excuse me, one over square root of two, um, uh, and one over root two is about seventy percent. So this should be about seventy percent the width of this one, and that looks about right. And so what you've got is it's it's a little bit harder for electrons to get from here into this thing. Now what I do see is that I've got some electrons leaking out the side there. That's a little bit disconcerting. Um, but they're bouncing, they're bouncing back in. So I take that to mean that the electrons have enough velocity that would take them out and then they bounce back in? That's a bit strange. Um, either way, uh, we are getting the, um, we're getting the, 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 the current going around. So this should give me the same results that I had last time, and I suppose in hindsight I should have measured the current on the last one. Um, 
<clears throat> and then compared it, because I should be getting the same current this time around. Um, so tell you what, uh, uh, you go back and uh, take and, and try to guesstimate the current from that last run, and then the current from this run, and let me know in the comments whether that worked. Behold, no surprise anymore. I don't think we get the same current. Um, this one's about 15. It's about 15 and a half. I think that's about what we had last time. Um, I'll go back and, and double check on the video afterwards. Um, so yeah, so we've got this working pretty well. Um, we're able to implement a different resistance and a different voltage for each resistor. We're able to calculate the current. So uh, what we'll try doing next time is making some more complicated circuits. So next time we'll try branching out into some parallel circuits in addition to our uh, into our series circuit that we have here. So that'll be lots of fun because the math gets even more interesting with parallel. I'm sure we'll have many more opportunities for mistakes. So as always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Okay, so I did go back and rerun it with the originals. Um, this one's a little bit higher, 18. Um, I think I need to get a better idea of what's a significant difference, because having the 15 last time versus the 18 now, I'm not sure whether that's a significant difference. So something to, or actually 18 and some change. So something to look into in the future. Thanks again for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.